G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach with DR and welcome to another pre-season team preview. I'll tell you what, Ben, really looking forward to this one. I have two absolute legends on the channel with me today. They are very much up and coming YouTube content creators and there's one reason why I've got them on the potty today. Now, I must say, they're not Gold Coast Sun supporters. The, none of us three have any inside knowledge or all the great goss on what's been going on up there on the coast but let me tell you that when it comes to content creating these guys absolutely know their stuff i'm big fans of their channel and it's absolutely criminal that these blokes are not yet on a thousand both so i will introduce you to these two wonderful gentlemen below me i have the super coach god mate thank you very much for coming on tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel mate yeah no worries dr it's a pleasure uh i'm super coach god i make Supercoach videos every one or two days. Um, I uh, enjoy it a lot. Love the game. Massive Pies fan, but yeah, I have a Suns logo logo behind me, which is just fantastic. What's going on there, um, mate? Absolute trader. The the black and white for the Suns. Tell yeah, you what, um, yeah, it's uh, questionable by me, but <laughs> look, got to represent the for the video. But um, yeah, post once every two days or so yeah just super coach god on youtube um i'm on twitter as well but i don't really post much on there but yeah awesome buddy well fantastic to have you on and uh i believe on 812 from memory hey guys look before round one let's get this great man to a thousand because he absolutely deserves it look he's, he's gone to to the hard work of, of putting a son's logo on the background as a pie supporter so absolutely taking one for the team here you have to respect that. So thanks very much for coming on, mate. Really looking forward to having a chat with you about the Suns, mate. And below the Supercoach God, we have one of my absolute favorites in the community. Not only does this man love his Supercoach, but also an action figure collector like myself. So welcome to Supercoach Wiz. Thank you very much for coming on, Legend. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel, mate. Yeah, cheers for having me. I've actually been a... a a big fan for a long time so it's a little bit surreal to be in one of these videos um yeah behind me i've actually got uh there's a bunch of lego and stuff and um yeah uh collect that and action figures and stuff as you said but uh yeah in terms of super coach uh i'm definitely one of those players that uh i have good theories and stuff i think but i i struggle to really follow my own advice we're all guilty we're all guilty of that my friend let me tell you but hang on before we move on what did you say is in the background? Can you just pronounce that again for me, please? I might not have caught that correctly, mate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a South Australian, so uh, we pronounce it Lego over here. Lego. I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> what's going on with some of these South Australian old friends, but uh, down in Victoria, Lego, Lego, the old Lego, but I know it's an SA thing. I, I do know that, but uh, come on, mate, Lego? Yeah, I've been copping shit for it for years, years and years, but yeah, you get used to it. Yeah, you're prepared to just cop it on the chin now, mate. So, no, I like it, mate. Stick to your convictions, stick to your principles, and represent SA, mate. But uh, look, we're not talking about an SA team today. We are talking about a Queensland team being the Gold Coast Suns. Now, straight off the bat, we do need to mention that they do have two buys, so they are around zero side. We can see in round three there, and then later on in the season, they share that with a few other teams. So I think that that may put off some coaches in starting some of these particular players. But I think when we take a look, particularly in our forward line, lots of people have someone pegged at F1 at the moment. It's going to be pretty hard to resist, even accounting for the buyers. So, blokes, you know how we do it around here. We will start off in defence, finish off in the forward line. We've only actually got two defenders today. And we're actually skipping the premiums because, to be quite honest, I don't think that there really is a premium pick. Some people are hoping that this bloke could become a premium or, at worst, at least be a really nice stepping stone. It is Connor Buderick, 22 years of age, only the two games last year. So season was absolutely ruined, cut down by injury. 77 for an average in those two games. So the bloke can actually score pretty well. 17.5 disposals. Didn't have any kick-ins. That's an interesting point, which we will talk about in a little bit. Two and a half tackles, owned by 
percent of the competition. Now, when I look at a lot of my data, I follow lots of content creators and other people on X. And this bloke is actually a pretty popular pick on the platform. We look at 5.7% ownership there. If I look on Twitter, I'm going at least 20% in the teams and I'm looking personally anyway. But we know that Dimmer is a big fan of this man. He's had, I wouldn't call it a role change because he has spent a lot of time down back, but he is looking to be one of the main men to distribute off halfback this year. And with the kick-ins, we see a zero there at the moment. That's big because certainly some bonus points on offer. We actually saw him take a couple of those kick-ins during the recent Pracky match. But Supercoach God, one concern I've got with this bloke is the fact that we didn't see him play in the same side as Will Powell. We've got another bloke we can actually select as a forward this year, a rookie who's in all of our sides. We're talking a little bit pre-podcast. So there may be a few mouths to feed back there in the Suns back line. But very quickly, mate, Give us your thoughts on Connor Buderick and whether or not you think he could be a pretty decent starting pick for those that go with him this year, mate. Well, he's in my side, that's for sure. Uh, loved his okay. preseason game. I think he's got the spot over Sexton from what I've seen. He's trying to play that um, Jaden Short role, as uh, Dimmer's described it. I think he'll probably... I don't know if he'll be a premium, but he'll probably make that 150k as a stepping stone to get to a a Sicily, a Stewart, who a Sheasel, whoever you're going to be looking at at the time. I I think Kickins is definitely a bonus. I remember a, a couple of years ago when he was a rookie and he was a lockdown defender and he was scoring bugger all. But yeah, now he's um got the role that's very super coach friendly and hopefully you can capitalize like it mate like it now Wiz is an interesting pick for those that are looking for maybe your three primo one mid price structure down back i think he's a pretty decent type selection what are your thoughts on connor buderick mate is he currently in your side or at least on the watch list uh, he's not currently, but I'm definitely looking for some kind of way to get him in. I think that we'll see a spike in his ownership if Zach Williams isn't named for round one. Um, that's definitely what I'm looking to do. And possibly as well, uh, depending on how Hayden Young goes in the next game, I'm thinking of maybe fading him and going down to Buderick because I wasn't exactly impressed. Uh, with. I know this isn't a Fremantle uh, episode, but I wasn't exactly <laughs> impressed with him in the, in the trial. So uh, Buderick kind of fits for either of those two, I think. It's, it's a good point. It's a good point. And the issue that we've got down back this year, and I think that's why almost the meta's changing to, I see lots of teams going four heavy down back at the moment. It's because of the lack of quality defensive rookies to actually have on field. You know, even the Gipkis types don't fill me with great faith. A Caulfield who lots of people have on field, well, where is he in the pecking order? I think he looks okay, and I'm pretty happy to have him on at this stage. But I think that Buderick is the most likely mid-pricer that would come into my side. And I'm absolutely with you, mate. Big, big, big question marks on Zach Williams at the moment. And hey, if you start with the Buderick and Williams gets off to a decent start, if he does play, if you do decide to fade him, it's pretty easy down as well, starting at 300 if Buderick doesn't look fantastic. So I don't mind him, certainly on my watch list. He did actually enter my side a couple of days ago when I was flirting with a bit of a different structure. But I just had to change midfield premium I wasn't happy with. So he's back out for now. But uh, Supercoach God, I will yeah, most likely be with you in starting Buderick if Williams still has those potential lingering question marks. So uh, good discussion, boys. Definitely on the watch list as an absolute minimum, I think. Now, I'm going to be honest straight off the bat here. Bodie Hewland. I had to look up how to spell his name, what his price was, what his averages were, what type of a player he is, because I just don't have a lot of info about him. One thing that I do know is the poor bloke was chucked on none other than Charlie Cameron in the last Pracky match. And to say that uh, old Charles gave young Bodie a little bit of a bath is a little bit of an understatement there. But look, hats off to the young kid for sticking at it. What a tough assignment. But hey, chuck him in the deep end. You can only be better for it, I think, unless you completely lose your confidence and then yeah, maybe he's buggered. But, uh, boys, I don't know how much you know about Bodie. I get, as I said, 
his name wrong half the time. But three games last year, 30.7 potentially sub-related. 1% ownership at the moment. Uh, Wiz, we'll start with you, mate. Can you give us anything about this man? I don't know a lot about him, to be honest. He's not even really on my radar as a pick. Um, I don't I don't think he'll be best 22. I just, I kind of tried to mock up a bit of a, you know, I try and mock up a 22 of each team. I think it helps, but um, yeah, he wasn't in the 22 that I picked. So I, I don't know. I, I just don't see him as a pick, to be honest. God. Yep. Give us nothing, um, mate. Can you give us anything on the man apart from you got a bath from Charlie? <laughs> You think about the Suns' back line, and they've got, what, Collins, uh, Ballard, Sexton now, Buderick. I just don't see him fitting into the team. And even with this 2023 average, I assume if a couple of those were sub-games as well. Yeah, I, I can't see this guy being a major player in the game. Cool, cool, cool. So for the 1% of coaches, sorry we couldn't give you much on old Bodie, but if you go there, all the best of luck. Hats off to you. We're straight into the midfield, boys, and we're going to take a quick look at Noah Anderson. He's the most expensive Gold Coast mid that we can select this year, 586,300. 23 years of age, 23 games last year, a tick under 105 for an average, a tick under 27 disposals on average as well. 12 contested, so not a bad mix there. Obviously, more of an outside type game there, but not afraid to get his hands dirty by any stretch of the imagination. 71% for a CBA rate, almost three and a half tackles. Now, 2.8% of the competition are looking to start this man. Now, for me, there's no denying his talent. I suppose the thing that really puts me off is his buy. We looked pre-buy last year, 108 down to 102 post buy, So certainly didn't set the word on fire. And another issue I've got, boys, is his consistency. Now, I'm not going to mention names here because it will bring back bad memories for a few people that may be watching this potty. But I do know a couple of blokes that brought him in after that 144 and 189 to only receive an 88, 73 and 92. So, God, we'll start with you, mate. Do you have any interest or whatsoever in starting Noah Anderson in 2024? Look, I've actually got more interest in the other... We'll, we'll, we'll talk about them anyway, but the other three midfielders and one... Or two midfielders and one mid-forward. But, yeah, I I think he, he should improve considering his age and another preseason down um, and probably should improve on consistency with that preseason. But I can't really see... I can... I could see him being an All-Australian, but at the same time, I could see him just having the same year as he did last year. It's hard to get a read on exactly what he's going to do, considering the midfield's got a bit different, a bit of a different dynamic now as well. Very good, mate. Wiz, any thoughts on Noah, mate? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not picking him myself. I think uh, with the Gold Coast, there's probably too many mouths to feed in that midfield, especially now that we think Flanders is going to really break out. So... And with the return of Took, uh, I don't know. Someone's kind of got to miss out, and it could be Anderson, I think. I'm actually with you, mate, because the next bloke that we're going to take a look at is Matty Rao. And let's be honest, he's not moving from the CBAs, is he? 82% CBA rate last year, 22 years of age, 23 games last year. So that's real positive for Rao. Didn't he start off like a house on fire? You know, those first four games averaged 127 and I'll put my hand up at the time. I said, this bloke is going to win multiple Brownlows. I'll call it right now. But unfortunately, I think that injuries have derailed his career a little bit up to this stage. Only young. I still think he can be an absolute superstar of the comp. For me, I think what he really needs to work on is creating more of a balance to his game. We look at those disposals. Average last year was 21.2, but the contested rate, 14.4. And don't get me wrong. We love that for Supercoach. We love that. But I'd really love to see that disposal count get closer to the 25 mark and even add three to four uncontested possessions to that total count. So I think that's probably what he needs to work on for me. I thought in the Pracky game, he actually looked pretty decent. Now take these stats with a grain of salt because there's been a little bit of conjecture, uh, conjecture, sorry, uh, from certain parties on exactly how many disposals certain players have got. This is the last Pracky games that haven't actually been officially recorded. But most of the time I've seen around the 18 mark, seven tackles, and that was in three quarters. So 
I actually like the way that he went about it against the Lions. Wiz, do you have any interest in this man whatsoever? You're having a sniff around Matty Rao or uh, just going to skip past him as a starting pick at the moment, mate? Uh, at this stage, I'm skipping past him, but I feel like he's that kind of player where one day he is going to break out and go like 700K or something like that. And you kind of got to be in the right place at the right time. It feels like we're probably not going to get too much warning of when that's going to happen. It could be this year. I don't know, but he pro you're right. He probably needs to add like some outside game. But the flip side of that is that at the moment, because he doesn't have much of an outside game, he can't really be played anywhere else. So I think that kind of might help True. his scoring to a degree. Like it, he's, he's not going to be the one to miss out in the midfield to accommodate Flanders. That's a very, very good point because we know what he does best. And as you mentioned, that 82% CBA rate, even with Flanders spending a little bit more time in there, I don't think that Rao is going to be the one that gets affected. Really good point, mate. Uh, Supercoach God, your thoughts on Matt Rao? Uh, yeah, I think watching a bit of the Pracky match over, I watched a bit of a replay on it. I think he's certainly improved his outside game a little bit, but... I probably need to see more in the practice match coming up this week and uh, round zero. But yeah, I, th I think he can only improve with age, Matt Rao. Um, I know that sounds quite funny considering he averaged 127 in his first four games, but <laughs> I think that that's why I'm more interested in him over Rao is because Rao almost has a... Com uh, sorry, An Anderson almost has a complete game, whereas... Raul, um, there's a clear thing that he can improve on to up his scoring by quite a lot. I like it. So you're focusing on that potential upside. So some of us that look at that as a downside, the fact that he doesn't have the best outside game, you're sort of flipping that on its head a little bit and saying, look, there's a little bit of meat on the bone potentially here. If you can improve that, well, that could be one of the reasons that he can achieve, what, say a 105 to 110 average potentially this year but i agree with you as well mate looking into the future surely he's just got to go bang and absolutely break out as we mentioned 22 years of age still a very very young man he's got another decade in front of him hopefully and uh, just as a general from a general fans perspective we're not gold coast fans as we mentioned but we want to see the best of this young man and uh yeah all the best luck and, and kudos to him because i'm a massive fan of matt Rowell, the player the next bloke is up there with my favorite non-Lions players in the comp, I've got so much respect for this man. Even though he's not the best of friends with uh, my man, Dane the Magician Zorko. They've had a little bit of history in the past, but I don't even want to say this as a Lions supporter. I was sort of siding with Tuke, like, yeah, give him one Tuke. I should not say that as a Lions supporter, but got a lot of love for this man. I've nicked a, nicknamed him the trademark, obviously TM, because when it comes to what's required, of an AFL footballer, this bloke brings it 100% of the time, I think. If you look at his leadership, his loyalty, now that's not going to get you super coach points, but I'll tell you what will, and that's two-way running. That's being an attackive midfielder, as long as a defensively-minded midfielder. He works so hard, and I had to get this picture up there. Look at the guns on this man. He is just a beautiful, beautiful human being, and I just love watching him. As I said, so much respect for this great man. Now, if you look at his average in the past, He's got around that 120 mark before. 2023 average, 97.6. So straight away, when we look at this pick and look at his history, there's meat on the bone. This is potentially a nice value pick. So 13 games last year, as we mentioned, 96, 7.6 for an average. A tick under 25 disposals, a tick under 10 contested. Now, if we go back to 2012, the year before last year, obviously being 2013, he actually lost five contested possessions off that average. Now, if you look at 97 compared to 120, well, five contested possessions, that's going to get you a lot closer to that 120 mark. We know that he was thrusted out of that inside mid roll for a little while there. I think maybe that was due to some fitness and it was nothing to do with professionalism. It was just coming back from injury. CBA rate of 67%. It's going to be interesting, boys, what that CBA rate actually looks like this year. We know that Flanders is going to spend a little bit more time in there. Usually that 67% would be a little bit higher. 19.1% uh, of the competition have actually selected him currently in their side. Uh, God, we'll start with you, mate. 
What do you think about the Tuke Miller pick? Because I would love to select him. I think there's value there. The buy is putting me off a little bit. And he's in competition with your crouches, your steel types. Tell me what you think about Tuke Miller, mate. I I don't know if his CBA rate will improve. But I am worried that if it won't, he he might just go to another club. I like he is twenty eight. I know you spoke about his loyalty, but you, know, you saw with like Taylor Adams wanted the CBA time, and he was like the there most loyal right. player yep. at the club. And he's twenty eight. He should be in his prime now, or a back end of prime. He should he should still be in it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm worried if Dimmer thinks. 75% of the list is a premiership side, then Took Miller is definitely in that 75%. So I, th- I think they need to give him a better CBA rate than he got last year. Obviously, he was coming back from injury, but then there's also the Flanders factor. Um, yeah. With his contested possessions, I think that should... I think... I'm, I'm thinking two things right now. I'm thinking, okay, Rao, Rao gets his outside game and Took Miller increases contested possessions. Bang, that's two picks right there. Win, win uh, a chicken dinner. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I've got Steel over him, over him at the moment. So, but definitely definitely looking at him. He's been in my side before this preseason, but yeah. Same as me, mate. Same as me. And I think being such a fan of him as a player as well, yeah, makes him even more tantalizing for me. Wiz, has Tuke Miller entered your side at any stage during the preseason, mate? Have you got any interest in the pick? He did a while back, but I was put off by the buy in the end. Um, obviously, yeah, yeah. this year is really annoying. You can't really just pick the best players or who you think are the I best. Yeah, you kind of got to base yeah. it around. You know, you can only have, say, one or two from each team, maybe. Um, but yeah, I really, really rate Tuke, uh, especially that two-way running you mentioned. Uh, it's funny, actually, of all people, Tex Walker said that the more times you go to the well, the more drinks you're going to get. And with Took, I think that's why he, he obviously just scores bulk points Great when he's in form. Yeah. My only worry with him and probably all of the Gold Coast mids is what effect Dimmer is going to have. If you think back to the Richmond dynasty, they didn't really have any like uber primo mids. It wasn't really uh, like a super coach friendly game style. So I don't know if that's going to change. Uh, if we might see a bit of a dip or they might just hit a plateau, I don't know. It's it's kind of an unknown, really. It's a very good point. It's a very good point because if you look historically, there's never been any real uber fantastic type scorers. We, we know what Dusty did that, that season. That was just a, a freakish type season. But you're right, mate. As a general rule, they don't score too well. So, look, I think we've all got a little bit of interest in Took. We respect him massively as a player. But I just think with the buys, I absolutely agree with you, Wiz. If not for the buys, I think that ownership of 19.1% would certainly be over 25 for sure. So, yeah, agree with both points that you got there. Some good ones raised. Very tempting. But, again, God, you're going with Jack Steele. If you look at those buys, it seems like the better solution for me. And you are saving a little bit of coin as well. So, uh, big fans of Took. Not starting him at this stage. Into the rucks now. Big Jared Witts. Now, 31 years of age, 21 games last year, 106.1. Playing some of his best football as he's getting on in age. But I think this year, it's a pretty easy decision. For me personally, it's a really easy pass. Not because I'm not a fan of Witts. I still think he can average around the 105 mark. Age isn't on his side, neither is it with Gorn, for example, though. But when I look at Gorn, I think absolutely elite type stuff. When I look at Jared Witts, I think fantastic player, great leader, does the hard stuff, but he's not on that uber elite type level. And the big question that I've got here, and it's a bit of a rhetorical question, I suppose, is why would you select Jared Witts over Gorn, Grundy, who are both cheaper than him, or English and Rowan, who you're obviously paying more for, but you're obviously getting that quality and in a much better age bracket. Uh, Wiz, can you give us any sort of good reason to look to start with Jared Witts? Uh, not this year. I, I fully agree with you. Normally, I think uh, there is merit in picking players that are just ultra consistent. Uh, 
you know, he's going to get you probably your 100, 105 most weeks. And there's not really any value there. But I th I'm a strong believer that it doesn't have to be value in every single pick. But this Absolutely. isn't the year to do it. It's not the year, not when you've got Gorn and Grundy as starting picks. That it's true, isn't it? It's not necessarily simply him as an option. And look, even I'm not the biggest fan anyway, but it's what else is on the table for us? God, do you agree with that very quick summation made on Jared Witts? Yeah, I do. I can't. I, I've had Gorn and Grundy in my team the whole preseason. I haven't even touched Sherry or anything. I uh, haven't touched English, Rowan. To be honest, I don't even think I've thought of Wits as a potential pick all preseason. I, I can see the positive in it, that it is a bit of a safe pick, but he also does, like all Ruckman, he does have the injury history. Yeah, um, true, true. Uh, but yeah, that that's all Ruckman, though. Like, you look at the four Ruckman you listed there, and they all have injury <laughs> history, so... Yeah, it doesn't That's feel great confidence, like does it? it? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, nah, agreed, boys. I don't think there's much of a discussion needed here. Just go with one of the other four, I think, Sarah Dwyce. Now, we're going to finish off with two players in the forward line, a bloke that you alluded to before in Sam Flanders, the mid-forward option we have on our hands this year, 494,200, 22 years of age, 14 games last year. For an average of just under 90, 24.2 disposals, 29% CBA rate. I think we are all in a grant that that hopefully will rise a little bit this year. 45.6% of the competition currently own this man. I'll put my hand up as an owner. And this is what excites me, boys. And it pisses me off in a way as well because I started with him last year and I got this bloody pre-buy average. I don't even know if it was as high as 44, but I started with him expecting him to get the role that he had post by when obviously Stewie Jew moved on, but it just didn't happen. Pre by 44 and then look at post by 106. If you don't mind, that is a 62 point differential if my maths is correct. Even the last five, 102 for an average. Talk about meat on the bone potentially with this selection. Wowie, I'm a huge fan. We know what he did at VFL level, absolutely killed it. I was pretty much gobsmacked why I wasn't getting a regular gig, particularly early on in the season. And in Dimmer's own words, get him in your super coach side. Now, positives, positives, positives. That CBA rate, personally, I think he'll be fourth in line, maybe to start off the season. Who knows by the end of the season? But uh, Wiz, what do you think about Sam Flanders and... Is he currently in your starting side? Of course he is. Uh, Good answer, mate. <laughs> I, I, I do have, I, I guess, you'd like a little bit of paranoia. I was the same as you. I started him last year and got burnt pretty badly. And I didn't get him back at the end of the year when some people did. Yeah, um, But I think this year, even if you have doubts, if you look at his ownership, you just can't afford to go against that because there's... You know, it's only a small chance that he's not going to go well. And yeah, you just, you can't bet against that. That's a really good point, mate. There's, I think at times there's a nice antipod to have, but the way our forward line's looking this year, I don't think that that player should be Sam Flanders. God, what do you think about the man? I'm assuming he's locked and loaded on your side at the moment. Yes, he is. So I have to look at the preseason games, of course, but I think he... He killed it in preseason last year as well, didn't he? And that's why so many people yeah. picked him. Yeah. He yeah. had a couple of 120s in there. But yeah, I he is in my side and I assume he will stay in my side. I can't really see anyone else replacing that spot. There's no forward lines just terrible this year. So Isn't it? yeah. Um yeah, he seems to be the best option currently. So and it, uh, under five hundred K for it. A potential F1 is definitely worth it. So, yeah, get in my side. Absolutely, mate. Could not agree more. And I tell you what, I'm actually currently pairing him with the last bloke that we're going to talk about today. This sexy man, I think, is a sexy pick. Even got him there with the uh, with the rig out. Reminds me of Spills in a way, looking at that rig, minus a couple of tattoos there. But uh, <laughs> Alex Sexton, 30 years of age, only the eight games last year. Now, boys... For anyone that's looking at this graphic and is looking at the 2023 average, 
don't get too worried about this. Don't get too worried about this. This is a complete role change and new coach. Now, 23.9 for a 2023 average, but that is absolutely music to my ears because that means we can get him at 133,400 this year. I'm not even going to go through the rest of his stats. I will go quickly to the ownership, 26.4% of the comp. I think for lots of people, he's a popular F5 to F7 type pick. The role change is what it's all about here. Now, with a new coach in 2024, I think he's officially off the scrap heap. I think if Stuart Dew was still coaching this side, Alex Sexton may have even been delisted at the end of the year. But now, for me anyway, he's looking like a really relevant selection for us this year. And when we're paying up these types of prices for players, usually they are your 18, 19 year old types. We get a mature age here and there. But with Alex Sexton, he's a seasoned AFL player. He passed the eye test for me against the Lions last week as well. Now, I remember it was a kick out, went out of bounds on the full. Looked a little bit scrappy at times, but the fact that A, he was taking a couple of kick outs, was looking for the ball, demanded a couple of times. I'm not too worried about that efficiency at this stage. So it was pretty much tick, tick, tick for me. Super coach God, do you have a different assessment on Alex Sexton? Are you worried that maybe the role isn't going to be there come the season proper. What's your assessment on the Alex Sexton pick, mate? I think the role can be there. I, I am a, he's in my side. I'm a little worried he's going to become a bit of a constable. Like he's meant to be playing on the halfback and all this. Yeah. And then he plays one game and just mucks up. Bad disposal efficiency or whatever. I don't know. But I think it, it's, it's funny how the leading goal scorer at the Gold Coast all time, I'm pretty sure, is now a uh, backman. There um, you go. You're right. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, to be a successful pick, think about it. He's only got an average about the 55, 60, really. It's not much. Yeah. Which yeah. isn't much for a half backer. And if you can add a bit more to that, there's only, there's only upside to this pick, I think. And obviously, considering he's 133K, it's easy to go to a 123k rookie that's playing or something. So, Great um, yeah, I'm I'm all chips in on this bloke currently. So, hopefully, he gets the job done. I'm with you a hundred percent, mate. Wiz Sexton currently residing in your side, buddy. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, I'm with everything that God just said. Um, I think with the shit show that is this year's forward line, we kind of have no choice. Like you got to take the punt and the risk is minimal given yeah. his, his price. Um, yeah. Just going back to wits. I think like this year, it would be nice to have a pick like that possibly in the forward line, just a guy that you, you know, know would trot out a consistent score, but there doesn't seem to be any. It's like some people are thinking of dusty for that role, just your consistent 90 to maybe one Oh five type scores, but you're absolutely right. We just don't have that this year. There's no Mr. Reliable. There's no Mr. Consistent. There's just question marks everywhere. So given that fact, I really like Alex Sexton. Now, I suppose a question on some people's minds, can you run with all of the Buderick, a Flanders and a Sexton? Is that going to put too much pressure when it comes to the early buy? I just think when you look at the value side of things with Alex Sexton, look at the potential value of someone like a Buderick, if he does have that role, remember we need to see him playing in the same side as Powell, as Sexton as well. We want to see their full complement before really making a, a final decision on these picks. But I just think with those three picks in particular, there are a lot of positives and those positives sort of outweigh the buy. The other thing that we've got to take into account, boys, as well, given the fact he's around zero play, his price will rise a week earlier than the rookies that don't actually play in round zero. So that may be another positive. Maybe not a positive when you look at the real primo type selections, but when you look at the rookie selections, maybe you're thinking, well, we can get an early rise from him. Maybe could I flip a couple of these early buy plays a little bit earlier? Lots of options, I think. But I think we're all in agreement that at the moment, he's a bit of a no-brainer selection with a potential role, with his age and... Uh, Bit of a new lease on life with a new coach. But fellas, that is it. A little bit shorter this week because when it comes to the Suns with their buys, I don't think there's a heap of relevant plays. And let's be honest, 
We're not even Sun supporters. So I reckon we did pretty well to get through that one, fellas, given the fact that we don't have any of this inside info type. But absolutely great debut from both of you blokes on the channel. As I said, I've been really looking forward to having you blokes on. You're both members of the channel as well, so a big part of the Super Coach with DR community. The invitation to come on, lads, is extended anytime. It's an absolute open invitation. And uh, if you're happy to have me on, if you don't think I talk too much garbage, I'd uh, yeah love to come onto your channel one time and have a bit of a chat with you two legends as well. But uh, Super Coach God, we will start with you. Thank you very much for coming on, Legend. As I mentioned, uh, some great content that you've been putting out. Big respect. I know that you were, we were talking pre-podcast for a little while as well. You got to a stage where it was just daily pumping out the videos. I know that people respect that, mate, and all the hard work that you do. But uh, before we go, mate, tell us, have you got any upcoming plans in regards to content? And uh, give us a little bit of a reminder about where we can find you and give your socials a bit of a shout out there, Legend. Yeah, thanks again for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I've been watching your videos for years, so always good. And um, yeah, I've got preseason game reviews coming up. I know there's one on right now. Shit, yeah, so I'll, yeah. I'll probably watch that first quarter over and see how the game pans out. I'll do a video on that. And team updates. I wanted to try and make a bit of a personality, like a get really excited about a player, get really mad about a player type of videos. <laughs> I think that would be quite funny. But yeah, you can find me over at Supercoach God on YouTube. So yeah, go chuck a sub if you're keen. Awesome, mate. Now, I just, just this is important and I forgot to uh, to mention this. When something goes wrong in your sides, don't blame this super coach god. Okay. Blame the super coach gods, the other super coach gods. Yeah, right? yeah. Hey, when something goes well, give him a shout out. Absolutely. And praise the man. But when something goes wrong, this is not the super coach god to take out your anger and fury on. He's a good bloke and he knows his stuff. So just wanted to uh, make sure I, I did mention that one, mate. Because sometimes the super coach gods, oh, they're not our friends, but you are a great friend of the channel, mate. So thanks very much for coming on again, legend. And Wiz, mate, great debut from you as well. Now, fellow action figure collectors, the two of us. So actually have a fair bit in common there, mate. But uh, yeah, appreciate you coming on. Love getting a bit of an insight. Now, you are a Crows man, big fan of the Crom. So I have to get you on with my best mate, Brent, as well. He's a mad crows man, a little bit off the rails, Brent, but always good for a <laughs> chat. And obviously our friend George as well, a mad crom man himself. So, mate, thanks again for coming on. Um, and tell us what you've got coming up, if you've got any plans or if you're just going to wing things come the preseason and uh, where we can find you, mate, if you want to check out your stuff. Yeah, as I said before, um, it's been quite surreal being on here. So, yeah, thanks for having me. As of tonight, I think I plan to get a Twitter now. I'll try my hand at that and um, see if you can teach an old dog new tricks. But um, <laughs> in terms of content, uh, I, I don't pump it out as consistently as Supercoach God. Uh, it's pretty hard with a couple of kids. But um, yeah, I plan to do uh, probably some uh, practice game reviews and I'm sure there'll be quite a few team updates between now and round one. So chuck a sub and keep your eye out for those, I guess. And I'll, I'll whatever I make the Twitter, I'll... I'll let people know in the next video or whatever. Beautiful, mate. Well, I'm sure that you'll get some pretty quick followers there, mate, with all the great stuff that you are doing on the channel. And can I relate to how tough it can be with kids sometimes, mate? Man, 12, 14. So the 14-year-old thinks he's 21 at the moment, an expert with the world. And then we've got a 15-month-old who just, he doesn't go around things or even over. He goes through things. He's an absolute machine this young fella, but uh, yeah, my mum often reminds me it's a bit of karma because I was a bit of a ride off unit myself, mate, which uh, people probably <laughs> wouldn't be surprised about. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, a bit of a, a community call out here. We need to get sub count, uh, sub count up for both of these two great gentlemen. So make sure that you go right to these channels now. So check out Supercoach God's channel at YouTube. Give a quick sub there. Then go to see Wiz as well. Give him a little visit. Make sure that you sub there. It would really mean a lot to me because I think it's so important that the great work that these men do actually gets promoted and gets out there because as soon as people find out about it, they will absolutely be rushing 
to have a chat with these two legends. So guys, thanks very much for coming on again. As I mentioned, open invitation. And everyone else, thank you very much for staying with us. Hopefully we did that justice. We don't know the sun's inside out, but we'll have our super coach, we'll have our footy. And uh, best of all, it was just great to finally sit down with these two blokes. So cheers, guys. Thanks again for coming on. We'll see you again soon. Catch you, lads.